Boom. Nice Welcome back, guys. Welcome to another episode of the Concord Health Podcast. And today's guest is um, a guy who's a lot bigger than me, uh, my little <laughs> five foot six frame, uh, John Vabgear Williams. Sorry if I butchered that, but me and <laughs> Nate right. is like not, not the best. Yeah. And so, John, how's, how's uh, I know we discussed it off air, but again, how's, how's lockdown treating you as, you know, a guy that's so used to the gym? How, how's it mentally and physically for you? Well, it's been actually like surprisingly good, to be fair. Um, I'm a personal trainer by trade. So I've been doing some Zoom sessions with my clients. I also been training. I did some training at home a lot with my son and my wife. And uh, we did uh, used a lot of bands. And I don't have any weights here. So um, I used the bands, did some, uh, a lot of work with that, push-ups, bodyweight exercises. And it kept me strong. Yeah. I just must admit, I mean, if you have the resistance of the bands and you can actually do it, it also created some endurance, which was great. So, um, yeah, yeah, it's that, been really good. I mean, that's, that's interesting as well, because we're going to come to to your your history. I mean, you've done um, World's Strongest Man twice, right? 2002, yes. 2003, which yes. is like the big stage. I'm super interested to uh, cover that. Um, but, you know, for a big guy like you, you're what, six foot five? Um, and how much you how much you do walk around that weight wise? I'm working around now about hundred and well, rocking from one forty to one fifty, I would say. Okay. But um, I'm currently at one four seven okay. kgs so, today. So um, yeah. So let's, yeah. Like, you're big, much bigger than the average guy, and so it's interesting that you say that the bands have been working. I mean, it's not long term, I'm sure, but the bands have been working well for you. And most people would think a big guy who shifts a lot of weight like you have done or do at the moment, yeah. it's, uh, you know, I can't be bothered with the bands. I don't get much from them. But you tell me that your bench press is actually looking like it's improving with the bands. So <laughs> it's quite, I mean, if you do it correctly, I mean, uh, I think Louis Simmons said it the best. I mean, uh, how do you say it? Um, lift, uh, lift with full intensity with sub-maximal weight. Yeah. And uh, that creates speed and force, and that creates a lot of uh, momentum if you can do that right way. But of course, I mean, me doing push-ups at 150 kgs is a lot more than um, at a lighter guy, you know? Me, yeah, me. Yeah. I'm, I'm only 70, well, I walk around, uh, I compete in the under 74s powerlifting, but I walk around at 77, so it's a lot harder for you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And also, I think also when I use bands, because my levers are long, uh, when, when, I'm, uh, when I'm pulling or pushing, it's a long distance to go. Mm. And uh, I think that's where the bands benefit me. Probably, I would probably say better than most, because when I do a push up with the band on myself, um, I have a quite a distance to recover. And of course, the width, the width of my back and the, the length of my arms, it creates a lot more tension for me. Yeah. If you follow me. Yeah, so I'm yeah, actually yeah. just really, I can really get a good effort out of the bands. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. It just shows that um, you've got that competitive mindset and you've got that mindset that no matter what the situation, it's not going to stop you training. And no. you're... <laughs> you're making the best of a situation. I mean, I'm very fortunate that when the lockdown kicked in, I mean, I own a couple of gyms anyway, so I can go and train at my gyms, but actually when yeah. the lockdown kicked in, I managed to get um, a whole host of equipment and I've got it all set up in my front room. So I do have some weights, but it's definitely give me a mindset shift and I'm working on um, accessories that yes. I wouldn't normally do, especially with things like my squat, which is, you know, my better deadlifting than I'm a squatter and, um, it, working on some accessories and it just makes you think outside the box and you know it's it's great to see someone like you who again is, is competed on the biggest stage you can get in strongman still going back to basics and saying right you know maybe i can work some bands and and you know get some gains doing things i'm not normally used to doing it's, it's great to see that yeah also it's just important that you bring yourself back i wish somebody had told me that uh before when I was training the hardest of my life and I was training with Magnus Ray Magnuson and we were pushing all the way every session 
I didn't know what a deload week was. <laughs> it was just, <laughs> I was just thinking about what, how can I catch up with Magnus? And, um, yeah. and I worked very hard and I, and I sort of neglected my, um, my deloads and uh, it was just about push, push, push. Yeah. So uh, uh, at the end, I was like training so hard for three years constantly and we were doing three, four hour sessions, you know, just pushing, pushing. And, uh, and then suddenly I felt myself going down. And uh, that's why I always say to people, you know, just don't neglect your rest because it's such an important factor. Yeah. Yeah. And, so, uh, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just saying like your resting period is where you gain the most. Yeah. So, so true, isn't it? I mean, it's knowing when to back off is so yes. key. And that's, um, that's something every good athlete, no matter what the sport can, can benefit from, for sure. Um, so one thing, I want to go for a couple of things. Your world's strongest man, competitions yeah. and where you started. And one other thing is, at first, is Icelandic strongmen. What is it all about? Why is there so many... Uh, top level Icelandic strongmen. Where does it come from? So you've got, you know, obviously the obvious ones, Hathor, yourself, uh, Magnus yeah. Magnusson, uh, Benedict Magnusson, and God rest his soul, uh, John Paul Sigerson. Yes. I mean, and, and a whole host that I haven't even named and can't think yeah, of. Yeah, I mean, there are, I can, I can think of like four others who have competed as World Strongest Men from Iceland. Yeah. And uh, at least. So um, I think the reason why we have such so many good strawmen is that Iceland has been voted to have the most nutritious food in the world. Mm. One thing. But what I think is the most important thing is that the strawmen in Iceland are approachable because uh, it's such a closer community. Yeah. And uh, when a heap of strawmen come together, they create the spirit. And uh, it's, we call it anti. And uh, when everything comes together and people are hyping each other up, hyping each other up, as you know, uh, then you become stronger, hands yeah. down. I have a great story about the first time I met Magnus with Magnuson. And uh, I asked him if I, if I could train with him. And he said, yes. Okay. Let's say I was least a uh, happy camper. I mean, that just <laughs> goes to show you as well how approachable it is in Iceland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Magnus and Magnuson has been involved with most of the straw men in Iceland. He trained Benny. He trained Hafthor. He trained me. I mean, it's, it's, he's a fountain of knowledge and he's not, a, uh, not shy of giving it away. And, um, you know, when everybody's so approachable, it creates that atmosphere where you want to improve. Yeah. And I always say this story the first time I went to this uh, to a session with Magnus my dad lift was a 200 kgs for three and I was pretty happy with that at the time little did I know <laughs> <laughs> now and he I walked into the gym and he says to me do you deadlift 200 and I said yeah yeah five times he said I was like uh, yeah of course <laughs> you know hence why mindset you know, already yeah. set myself to improve that day. So we started uh, deadlifting and he picked up that 200 like it was nothing on the bar five times. Yeah. And I went on the bar and I got it four times. So already improved one. Then he went to 240 and he picked it up five times like it was nothing on the bar. And I thought to myself, shit, <laughs> I better get on this, you know. So I <laughs> jumped on the 200 kg bar and I picked that up five times. So already improved myself, what I said to myself mentally. But then Magnus went to 260, picked it up five times like it was nothing on the bar. And I thought to myself, you know, I'm going to have to step it up. And I went on the 200 kg bar and I picked it up eight times. Wow. That's the mentality. That's the spirit that we're always talking about. And, you know, just it's that increase in uh, just mental force and, you know, just you, how you want to improve. And after that session, every week I was improving, I was improving. I remember I started slowing down about 250. That's when I sort of started feeling it because I got 220 for five, I got 230 for five, I got 240 for five. And, yeah. and that was week after week. I was increasing 10 kilos by the time. And that's mental. 
as a percentage, that's huge and fast increases. <laughs> I, I know. It was all mental. Just I thought to myself, if I'm going to hang with this guy, I'm going to have to catch up. Yeah. And uh, that's the strongest thing. It's very interesting what you say there, because I, actually, I wasn't expecting that answer. What I was going to expect you to say something like, you know, an Iceland, we, we, got the, we come from Vikings and that kind of mentality. <laughs> but, I mean, the sense of community is... It's massive for everything. That is how human beings should be. You know, Absolutely. Communal, together, um, families, colonies, um, and, you know, cooking together, laughing, loving, um, hunting together, whatever. So that's yeah. a really interesting point that you say that. And, you know, I remember when, and it was tiny, when I was in Genesis and you gave me a little tip for my deadlift. Straight away, it felt better. And yeah. One thing, I used to box. I used to be a competitive boxer, and it's very, very different. So yeah. um, just very quickly, it's, it's, it's not so much a sense of community. It's very single-minded, and yeah. you, don't, you, you don't bond so much. You know, it's very, very, very me against the world. But yeah. when I started powerlifting around 29 years old, actually, I was a little bit later in life, off the back of a heart attack, and I, I wanted a new sport to get into, and I yeah. noticed I started traveling around some of the gyms, the strongman and powerlifting gyms. I didn't really know what I was doing at first. And yeah. I noticed straight away there was a sense of, you know, people will come to help you. And there was a sense of community. And my first competition, I actually threw myself in the deep end. I didn't really know what I was doing. But instead of saying, oh, look at this guy, he doesn't know what he's doing. I was yeah. quite strong. That people were helping me and advising me. And I can yeah. imagine you times that by 10 if you go to Iceland. Um, yeah, it basically because you got how big the country? What a hundred? How many the population? Three hundred and fifty thousand. Okay, so it's tiny, yeah. really it's tiny. tiny, tiny population. Yeah, so I mean that that's a that's a very interesting answer actually, and that's a little bit more out of the box than what I I thought you were going to say, and that gives that gives me food for thought with my training to be honest. Absolutely. Um, so you, what, what started you off? I mean, how, how old were you and what decided to, were you playing sport was, before Strongman or? Well, the 2000, I was, uh, 2000, I started training at Gym 80, which was John Paul Sigmundson's old gym. And, uh, and I was just lifting there. And one of the Strongman promoters walked in and saw me lifting and said, hey, you will do good in Strongman. I know he was just trying to fill up his ranks for the competition, but I said, Hey, why not? So I gave it a shot, basically, um, and it was so much fun. I uh, I didn't even have I hardly had a 200 kg deadlift at the, at the time, and I thought to myself, you know, doing farmers work with 100 kgs in each hand yeah. was just standard. And uh, there I was looking at a hundred kilo stone that I've never seen before or done before. Wow! And uh, I managed to lift it, and I finished second last. But boy, I enjoyed it. So I thought to myself, you know, I'll, I'll give this a proper go. And uh, that's when I sort of uh, approached Magnus and, and I said to him, you know, I'm really interested. And funnily enough, I became the only, it's funny, he will say it himself, his only training partner. Just for the reason how he trained. We got a lot of guys coming and going through their uh, sessions and they all gave up because the intensity and the length of the session, and I just, I was determined. I really wanted to improve. Yeah. And um, who, who better to be uh, around to improve? I mean, it was just, uh, it was a no brainer for me. I mean, and so I kept going and, you know, just, we were always tight and we just, well, I showed up to every session and it was just oh, it was amazing times, great times. So, so, I mean, that's training with the best of the best. You said your, your session for three or four hours. What, yeah. How many days a week? So what was your frequency and, and what kind Probably of training four. were you doing? Four to five. Four to five. And that's a, that, uh, that is a lot of training. That is a and lot then of we did strongman sessions on the weekends. Oh, wow. I wasn't even counting that. Wow. So you're doing yeah. 20... You know, looking at 25 plus hours of training a week. I mean, that's yes. and and probably more to be honest. That that's that's crazy. I mean, oh, I mean, uh, yeah, that is crazy. I mean, it obviously worked. So, I mean, it did indeed. The yeah. the thing is, like, it's also. I mean, people are theorizing that you only need 45 minutes and or an hour in the gym, in and out. You know, but 
for progression, I believe the longer you're there, the, uh, if you give yourself the proper rest and you always sort of get your, um, get your spirit up, it makes it, uh, makes it a lot more manageable. Yeah. And uh, don't get me wrong, we had long breaks in between sets because we were going heavy and pushing yeah. hard and yeah. yeah, chatting away. Sometimes I was kicking Magnus's ass and say, come on, let's get on with it. <laughs> yeah. And of course, vice versa. But there we go. But you, got, you guys are big guys. So if you, if you have to take um, X amount of rest in between your sets, I mean, you're shifting so much weight in your peak. Yeah. It, it's actually it's counter, counterproductive to have short rest. You're not doing anything by having short rest. You're, you know, you're, it's, it's almost detrimental in terms of injuries and just strength gains. It's, you know, you're working yes. something different if you have um, short rests. So, so you were training with Ma uh, Magnus. What, so I just, I just figured out. So you started in 2000 and you were 2002. You were in World's Strongest Man. Yes. I mean, that's, what, two years? That's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> like I say, it was a lot of training and I put all the work in. So, um, and uh, then I was uh, always competing against Magnus. Yeah. And it was a lot to compete against because he was so technical. He knows, always knows what he's doing. He sets things up. And, you know, it's just, um, it, it was a tough nut to crack. But uh, in the end, you got sort of, the hang of it and it got better and better every time and uh you know explosive power uh strength and i was always better than um better than most in um like tire flips stones these unconventional strength things yeah. i would never say i was the strongest deadlifter i would never say i was the strongest squatter but however i was always good with everything awkward you know it was just function yeah yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I, so I saw your, your tire flip. Was it 2003? You just, yes. You just killed the field. I mean, and, and that's, um, you know, you were, you were by far from, from what I saw, the tallest guy in that particular event. Um, yeah. So I suppose in some ways that can make it, did you think that makes it harder or easier with your, with your. The thing is, it's about leverages. I mean, the way I could push my, uh, I used my weight a lot when I pushed into a tire. Yeah. So when I got my chest onto the tire and I got the drive from my legs and then the, you know, the accurate kick from your uh, legs to flip the tire over, that was the key. However, I wasn't even happy with my performance at, uh, even though I killed, killed it because uh, what happened was that when the tire went down at least twice in that competition, it started to wobble. Every yeah. time a tire wobbles, it's a second to one and a half second loss. And um, that annoyed the crap out of me. But, you know, I won anyway. And it was actually the fastest time of all groups. I was pretty happy with that. So it's a lot lovely to have on your resume. I mean, people don't realize, and, and even including myself, because I haven't, I haven't trained in strongman and, you know, obviously... Um, I, I, being a powerlifter, I know that's technical, but I mean, strongman is, is far, far, far more technical than people realize. And you, it's okay for someone sitting on an armchair saying, oh, he's really strong. He's lifted those Atlas stones. But yeah, there's so much technique to it. And the amount of times watching World's Strongest Man, I'm an avid fan. I watch every single year. And yeah. the amount of times you see people who are clearly strong enough to, yeah. to do something and there's a technicality and it just they absolutely fall apart they, they completely yeah. fall apart and you know it's um it's crazy to see that i've seen that on several events but especially things like the stones um and even some of the variations on on the truck pulls and the um even the deadlifts like the car deadlifts or whatever you see so many people who you think oh he's going to do great yeah, everything really. Log press is everything really, and I can name any event. But it, it's so technical. So when you were training with Magnus, with Magnus, sorry, how did you, how did you, how did you like divide your splits up? So you done strongman training on the weekend, and was it like yeah. Monday a push day, or how, how did you? Do Monday it? was usually chest and shoulders, and uh, chest and sort of high incline, and uh, then accessories after that. And then we'd have a deadlift day, then we'd have a squat day, and then, you know, just a, in general, back day. Yeah, yeah. So, so you, that you would, would usually be... The, the big lifts once a week mainly, so you'd squat once a week, deadlift... Once a week. 
Yeah. Yeah. It was, I, later in life, I found out that deadlift drains me a lot quicker than squat. Okay. And I also found that, you know, in my experience that uh, when I squat and I start to squat, when I start squatting better, I deadlift better. Uh, so that's, I mean, when I'm, when I'm getting older, I sort of found myself actually resting uh, gives me more strength than plowing through some um, useless sessions, I would say. You know, when I'm tired and I sort of, the focus isn't there and, you know, I just have to push myself to really try to get into it. That's when I know I'm, you know, actually I'm just tired and I'm going to just take it a little bit easier and focus on it from there. And, uh, oh. It's all right, I've got you. you go. you One black. But that's, you know, but back in the day, it was just like, push, push, push. And if you can't push, there must be something wrong. I need to eat more. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, 12,000 calories back in the day I used to do, which was, wow. Um, wow. yeah. So, so what, what does that consist of? Because you said that in Iceland, they have a super nutritious diet, which, which I do know. But what would a diet look like for you guys? What's, what's a day? What was a day? Well, I would... It was similar thing, like um, it was just eat good food and then add on to it. You know, just, I, I, one of my sponsors was a, like a cupcake company called the Kex Medium. <laughs> and I used to get like muffins like to the no end. So I used to write, invite the guys before sessions and we used to go like to my place and we used to eat muffins for hours. Oh, <laughs> not, maybe not for hours, but you know, just before the session. And we call them improvement muffins. <laughs> <laughs> they, were, uh, they were getting famous in the strength industry because uh, everybody would come to my place and I'd have like a whole food box and just milk and some uh, muffins to get some energy before the session. It was funny. Well, I'm, I'm not questioning anything. As I said, it, it clearly worked. <laughs> so your, your main meals, were they huh. is yeah. lots of meats, lots of meats, lots of fishes? Was, I mean, what? what yeah, was I mean... When we, at, at a certain time, even I had Subway as a sponsor, ah. and I ate Subway quite a lot, quite a bit, because it was too lazy to cook, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but also, we we did a lot of meats, uh, steaks, um, of course, chicken, and uh, fish was very very important because of the uh, omega three, and of course because Icelandic fish is fish is ranked very high in nutrition because our fish around Iceland is very little contaminated water. So, uh, yeah, good food. Yeah. Highly so nutritious. Because it's, it's, it's untouched and the profile of that fish is going to be far better than the fish you're going to pull from a, a supermarket over here or, or somewhere yeah. else. And that, that is so important. I mean, I know it's myself. If my nutrition is on point, my strength, pardon me, my strength is much, much better. Um, yeah. And even my, in, my ability to endure a session, I mean, my sessions are, I can't seem to do a session less than two and a half hours. So it's mine no. like three hours. Yeah. And, you know, when you get that nutrition right, you do have the ability to sustain um, a longer session and a more explosive session. It is super, super key. And yeah. um, are you, are you, um, I mean, where are you at now? So are you, are you looking to compete now still? Or... Um, because everything is shut down, I was going to uh, compete at Commando Temple. Uh, they had a strongman competition going, and I wanted to compete with that. And me and James Crossley, Marco Maximus, we we're going to uh, all compete there in the Masters category, have some fun together. No. Uh, but, of course, it was cancelled because of this um, situation that we have. And uh, I'm just now going to aim for just building my base again. <clears throat> so I'm lucky enough uh, that recently I have uh, my friends sort of gotten, um, I got access to my friend's gym. Okay. And I also uh, have once a week, I can go to my uh, client's house and uh, I train there. I can do my deadlifts there, which is nice. great. Nice. Okay, yeah. good. So you, you, you've got you've got somewhere, and that that's, I mean that's uh, that's so nice to have as a privilege at the moment. I tell you, it's uh, I feel like some powerlifters and some strong men are gonna really jump ahead in this lockdown, 
And some yeah. guys are just, I mean, mentally, so a lot of it's mental as well. For, for I don't know about yourself, but for me, it's, you know, if I, I, I'm suffering up here and I'm having a little bit of a down day or whatever, you know, training just changes the game yeah. completely. And you yeah. always feel better. You always feel better after a workout, you know, unless you get injured. God forbid that doesn't happen, but you always yeah. feel better after a workout. And um, I do feel sorry for a lot of the guys that um, were, you know, were really, were really kind of in the zone. Some of the competitive powerlifters and strongmen in the zone before the lockdown, and and now they're just bang. They, yeah. They've hit like a wall, and there's nothing to do. But that's why starting off with what you said that you know you're using bands, you're working your way around it. If someone like you can do that. And you've competed at World's Strongest Man, as you know, as we've said, there's, there's no excuse for someone else not to find a route to keep themselves ticking over because the road back, I mean, I always find it hard. I've had four or five month layoffs from injury and the road back is so, I mean, you always do it because there's no choice, but it's so, to the first month or two, I find it so hard. And, yeah. Uh, it's painful. It's painful getting yeah. back into things. I was speaking to uh, Benedict Magnuson the other day. We were discussing, you know, like, you know, injuries and stuff. And um, I know one of my friends who was, uh, he's a, he was an Olympic lifter. He did some strongman. He did some powerlifting. Very strong bench presser. And uh, when you're a very strong bench presser, you're prone to shoulder injury. Mm. And uh, so he was going to get his shoulder operated on. But they de kept delaying his... Um, his uh, recover, uh, his surgery, and uh, he was he was very tired, but he was very persistent, and he got little weights, and he was just doing some mobility exercises, just moving around, and uh, when he finally showed up to the uh, surgery, they they did a scan on him before, yeah, and actually there was nothing wrong anymore. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. So. I think consistency is king. I mean, he was just never tired. He just always kept on it. He decided to really just, you know, get his shoulder, do light bench press, nothing heavy. And he fixed it himself, basically, which is quite remarkable. So I, I think that story can go for many people who are actually suffering with injuries that actually if you do your, do your homework, you do your mobility, and uh, then you can get rid of most things by yourself. Yeah, definitely. So definitely. it's amazing because I think constant blood flow, constant pump, you can fix a lot of things. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. We'll see, you know, and if you're not sure, um, anyone that's listening, if you're not sure, guys, um, I really recommend getting a trainer, finding someone that's right for you because it is worth spending a few quid and get in the right direction because not only are you going to improve your injuries, it's, it's going to take your game up. If you're a an athlete that requires strength and that's most sports from tennis yeah. to rugby to football to to you know even cricket of things uh, or an actual strong man or power lifter i have a coach myself and yeah. you know even though I'm a, I'm a trainer and i've been a trainer for 15 years i wouldn't go without my coach because just to get that outside perspective that i can't see myself you know i'm i love taking in info and acting like i don't know anything because yeah. That's, that's how you grow. And I, I don't care if I win the IPF Worlds five times running or whatever it might be, yeah. I would still act like a novice because, you know, once, you've, once you become a know-it-all, you're, you're on the decline, in my Absolutely. opinion. Absolutely. I certainly agree. And funnily enough, two weeks ago, I got myself my own coach because I thought to myself, you know, I've been training by my own head for so long, you know, learned everything from Magnus and, you know, was always training for that. And uh, then I decided, you know what, I'm going to build my base up now, just really concentrate and just build a good foundation. So when I come out of lockdown and, you know, fully can get into strong man and get back into Genesis, oh, Genesis, I miss you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I want to, you know, just, I want to just really get out of this with flying colors. So I, decided to get Delroy McQueen as my okay. trainer, yeah. as my coach. So yeah, yeah. I'm very happy with that. And um, Great coach. Only, yeah, only on second week with him. And uh, yeah, it's going great. Good. So I'm just doing basic box squats and uh, just building up the base again. 
Yeah, uh, that, that, I mean, that, that'd be interesting. I'd like to, to see how that works for you over. I mean, I think we know it's going to work well, but for someone like you who's been there and done it all to go back to basics, change coach, make some tweaks and see yeah. what happens from there. And, and that's something that everyone can do. If you hit a plateau and that plateau is lasting, there's something needs to change because it's hard really in, in, in strength sport to ever say, I'm done. I peaked. I don't think any of us have ever have that mentality. I don't know about you, but as soon as I PB, yeah, as the bars on the way down, so it's a deadlift. That's the bars on the way down. I'm thinking, ah, did I have more in there? Can I do yeah. more? <laughs> <laughs> you Absolutely. Know? Absolutely. And I, I, I'm thinking that before I finish the bloody lift. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the, the funny bit is like you know just uh, when when the, when it goes smoothly and you hit that target that you want to hit you want to go higher. And I'm a big, big believer, like, if, if you have a great day, bloody use it. Yeah. I mean, I think when everything is moving, like it feels like nothing, that's when you should go up. I'm a big believer in that. So sometimes when you cheat on your coach and you go up, I think that's a good thing because if you're feeling like it's really there, yeah. you should go for it. Yes. I always so, remember so push, you're saying that push those RPEs push you know if you're feeling that day see what's in the locker don't don't there's a saying isn't there I'm, I don't want to butcher it but it's better to to know how strong you weren't on the day than how yeah. weak you were so basically yeah. you know it's I don't ever want to leave anything on the platform when I compete and if I you know it's fine if I come it's fifth out of 10 or whatever, wherever I come, at yeah. least I know I, get, I left everything on the platform and, and I've done everything yeah. I could in training. And then it's just down to me to get better. But you don't, you, you never want to, you know, you never want to go in half assed ever, ever in training or a competition. And like you're saying, I do, I really agree with you there that if you feel you, you walk into the gym one day and it's there and, you know, it's, your arsehole's there, then, then, then let's, let's put some plates on and see what's going on. <laughs> exactly. It, I think it's important just for your health mentally because let's just face it, we can have great days mm. and then we can have those days mm. and then there are other days who are just bad and you just don't feel it and everything is hard. Yeah. And, uh, but I really think that when things are hard, you either have to rest or you know, just sometimes your diet wasn't on point and you just have to push through it. Yeah. And um, mentally, you have to stay strong for that. Yeah, so, sometimes it's biorhythms. I believe in biorhythms. You know, it's just everything felt right, but it just wasn't yeah. right on the day. You know, you were eating well. You felt good when you walked in the gym. Some of my best days have been when I walked in the gym and felt like garbage. And I felt yeah. tired. And, and then something happened. I don't know what happens, but something no. happened. <laughs> that has happened to me as well. It, there's a lot of things to it. And I also think that, you know, that's why I should encourage people to compete more because when you compete more, the more likely you're hit one of those amazing days and everything works out. Yeah. You know, and uh, also experience, you become more relaxed. Yeah. You can, um, you know, you focus more on your lift instead of being nervous. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I always am nervous when I'm competing because it's just the way we are. Yeah. But in the later, later in my life, it became a lot easier. Yeah, yeah. And you, you, uh, hard, you hard, seem to harness the nerves, right? Yes, yeah. but also I don't know how most people work, but always I always outperform when I'm competing. Yeah, you know, just everything in my gym lifts. Like for instance, um, I deadlifted to two twenty. That was the highest deadlift that I did before London Strongest. And I pulled an easy 275. Oh, wow. In, yeah, in the competition. Wow. And I just, uh, I don't know why, but I really should have, I really thought that 300 was in that day. But for some reason, I didn't want to go that day. But which was a little bit frustrating, but there we go. Yeah, it's just the way it happens. I mean, yeah. talk, talking about deadlifts, I can't not bring it up. What did you think of the 501 Hathor's lift? It was amazing, man. It really was. I, I was really, really, you know, happy with it. And uh, I mean, 
everything was weight, everything was, you know, 100%. So, yeah, it was, uh, I don't think even, you know, Eddie Hall's plates were all weight like that when he did the record. But they were all rogue plates anyway, so it was definitely 500. And I think Eddie Hall, like, is his, the greatest feat I've seen in strawman or well, powerlifting or deadlift or whatever yeah. that I've ever seen. I, to be honest, I didn't expect to see a 500 kg deadlift because it was such a huge jump. From 465, and, and that, that I, I see. I think Benedict done 465, right? Yes. Yeah. So they all, they all three of them did 465. So they all of them technically broke the current record, and then they went straight into 500. I mean, this this gap is so immense. I mean, when you're at weights like this, a kilo makes a difference. Yeah. So I mean, I I'm, I I think people do. But I'm not so sure, unless you're in and around the sport or do a lot of weight training, I'm not sure people realize how big a margin that is. That's like knocking 0.5 off the 100 meter final, you know, yeah. off the 100 meter sprint record. It's a crazy amount. And if you knock 0.5 of a second off the 100 meter record, you'd look like you are half the, you know, you'd look like you were 10 meters in front of everyone. And Absolutely. It, um, I mean, I got so much respect for, well, or anyone in strongman really, but you know, especially like the guys like Eddie, um, Hathor, and and just any anyone like that because they're bringing a lot of publicity to the sport, which is you know most of it good, which is only a good thing because to see Giants live and the crowds yeah. they get at Giants live now, it's, it's so nice to see because the guys work so hard and they deserve it. Like guys like Mark Felix, who's been around for years. Um, yeah. And to see Mark break, um, what, what, what world record did he break when he was holding the... Um, Hercules hold. The Hercules hold, that's it. Couldn't think of the name. Yeah. So when he breaks, you know, a, a guy that's been around for a long time breaks a Hercules hold in front of a huge crowd. Yeah. I love to see that because the work, you, guys like you and guys like him um, consistently put, and the others consistently put in, you know, they deserve the accolades. They deserve any money that comes with it. Any, and you know, you know, any, um, any kind of support or whatever that comes with it. And it's, it's great to see that. And I'm glad the sport is what I think by looking from the outside, um, the, the strong man is on its way up. Yeah, it absolutely is. It's on a massive rise. And, uh, I think that's so great for the sport and, uh, it's so much fun to go and watch and even just watching on live television, you know, it's just, uh, it's a fantastic thing to watch. I still haven't met the person who said, oh, strong man, can't stand it. I still haven't met that person ever. Everybody's interested. Everybody, you know, thinks it's something spectacular. And uh, that's so very, uh, that makes it very cool. I tell you, my nan and my granddad, they're in their 80s and, and they will sit and watch it and they love it, yeah. you know. Yeah. And, and, and everyone in this country, you know, I don't think there's anyone in this country that pretty much doesn't know um, Eddie Hall now or, yeah. um, oh, what's his name? The name's gone from me. The um, uh, Jeff Capes. Um, yes. Uh, uh, Jeff Capes, you know, they, they, so... There is a big kind of love affair with it, and it's it's intriguing to see big guys shift big weight. Yeah, There's something about it is intriguing, and and it's always going to be watched. And the more money that comes into it, the more, the bigger the crowds, and you know the the more kind of famous people are going to get. Really, we got. I mean, the Brits uh, have got quite a good pool at the moment. The Stoltman brothers, um, uh, the Stoltman brothers. Obviously, Eddie's kind of you know not really doing much anymore, but he kind of put it on the map again in in Britain and. We've got some Absolutely. Adam. Adam Bishop is doing great. I was just about to say Bish, Adam Bishop. And yeah. um, um, what's his name? He um, won uh, Raw Dogs. Um, Graham Hicks. Graham Hicks. Hicksy, yeah, Graham yeah. Hicks. Yeah, yeah, so Graham Hicks. And, you know, it's, um, it's definitely, definitely on the rise. So you, um, you own Strength Tips. Talk to me about Strength Tips. What's, uh... Strength Tips is uh, an idea that came when I was training my clients and everybody was asking me sort of how was it in Iceland and how did you train there and bada yada. And then I thought to myself, why don't I just show them? <laughs> okay. So, yeah. so yeah. I created www.strengthtips.com 
and I thought to myself, you know, this is going to be great. And I went for the trip with two clients and we went for four days, which was the first one. We made it a little bit longer than it should have been, yeah. but we had some great fun. Uh, we went and uh, explored Fudstekur and all of those stones and then we were training in the gyms and then we went out in the evenings and had some fun and it was absolutely brilliant. So right. it worked, yeah, worked out phenomenally well. And um, then I decided to up the trip a little bit and also go with a quad bike. And uh, of course it became quite expensive with the quad bike trips, but also we had to travel a little bit more. So what we did is we went for the stones and then we went for traveling on the quad bikes, but that was a lot of driving. And, uh, but then I thought to myself, you know, it's sort of basically too expensive for the average average uh, people to come along so i put down the price quite a bit and i took out that you have that i bought the plane tickets so uh, that sort of put the price down and uh, now it's really working well and you know all all people or all sorts of people are wanted to come along and they actually can afford it and come along and uh, it's just that experience you know just going to iceland eating good great food and uh, training hard and then lifting some stones that's been lifting by ancient sailors for I don't know how many years and uh, yeah so it's a very thorough experience. Oh that, that's cool I didn't realize you do that so anybody can go so yes male female anyone can go and absolutely no you might you might have just found a new customer. <laughs> yes <laughs> I mean Actually. I'm telling you it's such a great experience because we go to Thor's Power Gym we go to Jakobol, where Magnus is where, uh, Jim, and uh, he, uh, I mean, he has always been there, meeting people when we come, and uh, uh, Blue Lagoon. yeah, Blue Lagoon as well, okay, you know, okay. where we re rest and recover after the whole trip, just before we go on the plane, and then we're nice and cozy getting back to the UK afterwards. Oh, or, nice. I mean, I even had guys from the US coming along. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So when, when are you, when, so when's your next one? Uh, it was supposed to be next weekend. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, and so also you, there's no uh, ideas yet when your next one is until this, this yeah. lockdown's over, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. So well, I know lockdown is over in Iceland. So they stopped it completely now. Okay. And our uh, gyms are open in Iceland. Everything's back on track. But of course, with a population of 350,000, it's quite easy to do that. Yeah. yeah. But, um, you know, if, they're lo if they don't quarantine us when we come back, that's, uh, so that will predict when I can put my clients back onto a trip to Iceland. Okay. That's, uh, as I said, I think you found yourself someone else to come. And my, uh, my partner, she competes, actually. So um, I think the parents Fantastic. will be coming. We'll keep, I'll keep an eye out for that and stay in touch with you. So, yeah. Well, like I say, it's www.strengthtips.com. And I'm updating the dates on the website. So, so uh, yeah. Anyone that's interested, check that out, guys, because um, I, I think anyone could benefit from that. You know, it's nice to go on holiday and actually do something, um, yes. get an experience and... You know, there's nowhere better to train in terms of um, strong I also, in Iceland. I'm also very thankful for you to uh, take me on your podcast. So what I want to do is I want to send you my wrist wraps. <laughs> ah, thank you. Yes. And uh, I'm getting a new shipment soon. And uh, I'm very pleased with them because uh, they've been really been using by athletes here in the UK and they're really really improved well like I say they're really showing that they're really really good and people are very happy with them I would be absolutely um, grateful to test them out and would yes. love that so I appreciate that actually I've got to say something, something really really interesting the other day it was funny so I was sitting at home and yeah. I was just checking out some bits on your Instagram getting ready for the podcast I always like to do my research and I, you plug something about your sister, about your sister's art. Yes. So I'm sitting there, and my girlfriend's an artist. I'm looking yes. at the wall, at the wall in my house, and I'm looking at Instagram. 
realizing that your sister is my girlfriend's favorite artist and we have the art all over the house. No way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pillows, paintings. And last year we went to um, an art fair at King's Cross. And yes. my girlfriend absolutely loves your sister's art. It's her favorite artist on the planet. So it's the Amazing. weirdest coincidence ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I can, I can display uh, bam, bam, bam. There we go. And that's not it. We have the globe from her. Oh, wow. And then we have the painting on the wall. Wow. And yeah, there we go. Wow. And hopefully, well, soon enough when the lockdown is over, we are, um, we are going to, um, we're going to get the wallpaper on our walls. Amazing. So that would be interesting. I have to say she's very talented. And it, uh, it, oh, clearly, it clearly runs in the family. So you're obviously a very, <laughs> very driven, motivated family. And um, to be honest, brother, it's been a pleasure having you on. And I've absolutely loved it. Um, to be honest, um, people are going to take a lot from this podcast. And I'm motivated myself. Talking to someone like you who's been at the top stage. Um, and I really love your ethos of, you know, competitive spirit and hard work, but you, you don't even have to say it. I can just see you love helping people. You love yeah. helping people and you love giving back. And you can see that the way you were around the gym, but obviously in your, your work on your website and, you know, it just oozes it. And by giving back, you know, you're going to gain more yourself, but people, people will you know, they'll always follow you when you give back and it's genuine. You can see it's genuine. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on. Um, and I'd love to do it again sometimes. Maybe Absolutely. If, you compete, if you compete or something, we'll do it after the next competition, see how that goes and we'll get you back on. That'd be amazing. I'd love to be back on. It's been an enormous pleasure and uh, always great to chat. Amazing, man. Well, look, you look after yourself. Um, stay safe in lockdown and... Um, Keep pumping those bands until uh, we can go back to the gym full time. Yeah. Send me your address and I'll send you the wrist wraps. I will do. I'll send that over to you. And um, what I'll do, this will be all over social media. Um, you'll be tagged in. And guys, um, if you want to get in touch with John, um, all the links will be on the bottom of the podcast, the website, um, all your social media, John's social media. And um, I really, really highly recommend if you're getting into strength sport or strongman or you're doing um, a sport even if you're just a beginner get in touch and um, get some coaching absolutely. off someone who's been at the top level absolutely and i look forward to hearing from you yeah. all right buddy <laughs> all right thanks for having you on man all right see you later take care